the other uh, thing that uh, um, the other thing that uh, is uh, is worth mentioning is uh, um, I'm out of things worth mentioning. So let's let's let's, let's, roll, let's roll into the event. I'm sorry if I'm if I'm gonna be a little scatterbrained today. I'm the person the only person running the show today. Uh, my usual co-host has the last minute commitment, so you're only gonna see. Uh, you're, I'm, I'm currently running the stream and also um, trying to do commentary, so I'm hoping that this works out. But <laughs> uh, it might might get a little rough in um, here here and there. Um, so today for the round one matches we have um, Nefola versus Eripmav. Kara versus Windy and Tulip versus Wafa. I'm gonna pause it in tournament discussion as well. Someone called that. Someone called that. Crazy. Someone called what? Mm. Kara versus Windy. <laughs> Ow. Someone called that. You should probably show this game so that you can watch the tempo mirror match. I yeah, that game is gonna be super. We don't. Sick. We... It's... We don't see a lot of tempo, so like I'm going to jump off the occasion. If uh... yeah, Wendy, can you host? Oh, sorry, I heard my name. Wendy, can you host? I can do that. So yeah, I'm hopping over the tempo. Okay, I'll, I'll hop there too. I'm hopping in the bench. Never mind. All right, uh, you guys get out of here. I'm gonna start doing commentary. Alright, everybody's out. So, let's see what these matchups that you have today are. We have... Uh, Kara vs. Windy is, uh, as uh, was mentioned, uh, a tempo mirror. Specifically, uh, Windy is on his usual uh, spells list, whereas uh, Kara is playing... Uh, um, some sort of Grixis... Oh, he's, I think she's playing. Oh, I think she's playing Holotog. I think she's playing the uh, the the Wheeler list. Um, last week's champion Eripmav is back with his Tinker Morph deck, squaring off. Uh, um, I need to stop doing that. Squaring off against uh, Nefola, who is oh my god, <laughs> too many things to look at once. Nefola, which is uh, on um, some sort of four color combo deck, which is not better specified in my list, might be just the the storm mid range. I don't think so. And then finally we have uh, Tulip, which finally decided to bring Mono Red. We have a Mono Red deck that just showed up against Wafa that is running his just a control list. I think uh, I'm kind of curious to see the red deck, but. Um, I also kind of want to see Windy's uh, the tempo matchup, so let's head over to let's head over to that. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'm gonna apologize, but uh, I, I I'm not gonna apo I'm not gonna. Uh, um, update the text today because uh, honestly like I don't have the attention span to do this is not okay so <laughs> the game is uh, is getting started I think both players kept seven no I think windy went down to it looks like five even and um so Kara on a, a hand of uh, a, a couple of removal spells, three, actually three removal spells, pretty like big versatile removal spells, and a couple more lands, a crackling drake and an opt versus uh, Windy's uh, <coughs> and of. Uh, uh, an island, plus the land that he has in hand, the lightning strike, vapor snag, young pyromancer. That's a pretty strong hand, but um, Simeon has a lot, Kara has a lot more, uh, has a lot more things that um, 
she can um, that she can deploy, and uh, we'll see how the last stack of resources. How young Pyromancer for Windy is um, is the start. Uh, let me pop out Twitch chat real quick. And how do you how do you do it like this, right? Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, so young pyro for windy. Um, ooh, uh, it looks like Simeon might, Simeon just opts to immediately has this member, which for four life, which is like a pretty pretty significant uh, loss of life against their opponent is looking to pressure like so and just fired off a rift bolt on turn one um and um uh, but wind is not very close to actually finishing the game you see him fight you see he fires off his light of hand he has five points of burn in hand which is not nothing six with the vapor snag actually um sorry about that and uh Oh, find the true name Nemesis. Points, a pillar of flame at Kara's face. Um, Kara's hand is pretty cold to true name. If uh, if Windy finds a sound blue source quickly, that might kind of be it. It's, we're going to have to see where this goes, but... Um, Kara has 11 life, Windy has 4 more points of burn in hand, and um, so it only, it only needs to like get in like about 3, like uh, probably twice with the through name, and hopefully by the time you find another point of burn somewhere. Um, Simeon's hand is powerful, but it might be too slow. Um, we see a smattering of 2s and 3 drops, these collective, this collective reality, to be fair, might gain life, which is uh, not, absolutely not nothing. She, we might see Kara pitch one of these two fetch lands. Peels of a monastery is wifted at the top, that's not, that's definitely important, because it's a way for her to start pressuring Windy. If I were to guess... She's gonna cast Collective Brutality, pitching the Misty Rainforest this turn. Um, and uh, opt to Drain Life and Duress. Yeah, cast Collective Brutality. Let's see what the mods are. We'll see what the mods are in a, in a second. Yeah, uh, Drake is gonna be hard to cast, but it's also very powerful. Uh, yeah, she, she decides to pitch Drake. Um, I guess it depends on how, how much... Um, it, dep it really depends on how, how easy of a time you think you're gonna... Like, how much you're gonna need your fourth land drop, right? Um, seize a hand of lightning strike by present true name nemesis. Presumably, I would imagine takes the lightning strike. If I were to, um, yeah, takes the lightning strike, and um, and gets seen for two. Okay, the collective reality I think might have done enough to stabilize this game for uh, for Simeon, but uh, we'll see how that uh, uh, how that ends up panning out. Uh, ooh, Windy peel the price of progress. That's huge. Price of progress put is six square point of damage. Right in the face, and uh, uh, oh, there is no way to just clip this up top. Simeon finds another land, and now this now two hits from this turn is gonna be legal, lethal. Simeon fires off a Colagans command. Presumably, points are discard a card. Deal to damage, I would guess. 
Does she get the Drake back? Um... Kulagan's command targeting... Wait, Young Pyromancer? What? Did she have a Young Pyro in the graveyard too? Did they miss something? I, I am confused. It says mod 2 targeted Young Pyromancer. Oh, I think it was probably just... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the mod, what the second mod is. It was probably just to damage. Um, wait, did seem did Kara also have a young paro, and did I somehow miss it? Apparently, she did. Okay, um, that's that's the part I was con con I was uh, failing to consider. Yeah, there's the true name, and see, I can't really do anything about it. We'll see if this Trunem can close up the game with two hits. Uh, Kara put up a pretty decent fight from uh, being able, uh, like, in order to like stabilize against this boy, against uh, being this board and try not to take too much damage. But Price of Progress and Trunem Ramesses are powerful magic cards, and they might just be lights out. Simeon. Pops a mystery in forest out. Fires off a mold drifter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She also had a young pyro that I had forgotten about. Opts to just evoke the mold drifter and draw a couple cards. You know, the old, the old divination. Um. Oh, also, since I have people in chat, uh, is my audio does my how does my audio sound? Am I, am I sounding fine? Is that uh, uh, just just asking, just asking because I've had a bunch of audio problems in the past, so I'm just trying to make sure that I'm sounding a okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's keep looking at this match. All right, uh, Kara has a hand stacked with cards. She has a couple of draws, but there's Charters and Desponder. And honestly, the time for those might be approaching its hand. Uh, and then she has this young Pyro. She has to decide whether she wants to try and find an answer to this true name, which might not exist in her deck, uh, or uh, if her plan is to drop this young PZ and try to race. And finds out that there is no answer, so they just uh, that's uh, the um, the Simeon Spirit guy prompts a concession, and we go to game two. All right, game two with Karen on a mold to six from with uh, uh, four lands, Young Pyro, Cathartic Union. And uh, which he decides to pitch for three lands, Force of Will, Git Probe, Psychatog, the titular Psychatog. Psychatog is added, makes me a little sad. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Windy Hepsi is 7 with uh, two lands, uh, True Name, Force Spike, Incinerate, Fever Vision, uh, sig Signature Card, Fever Visions, and Ionize. <clears throat> Uh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see probably Windy. I'm assuming dropping Island Go, uh, hoping to force spike something, and then seeing what happens in turn two. Uh, probably this force spike not gonna actually have a target because uh, I'm assuming that based on Kara's hand, she just fires off the thoughts, is, which is gonna be pretty huge as it's presumably gonna take True Name Nemesis. Yeah, Windy just uh, plays the Island. And unless he drew something great, I'm assuming we're gonna see his, his draw was Bedlam Rabbit, which is a way a way off. Um, it's, it's gonna be a while. All right, um, Kara presumably fires off her thoughts. Is uh, 
I'm assuming that Kara's uh, uh, plan is to go Thoughts into Psychothog, and uh, then we'll see we'll see what happens at this point. There's a risk factor which not looking pretty not looking very great here with no with no thread on board but we might see we might we might see if it deploys it's uh it's a little it's a little awkward to risk factor your opponent when they're at, tw when they're at 20 like presumably they just take eight but maybe you're fine with that maybe you're like yeah sure take eight um the we're gonna have to see what this risk factor does. In the meantime, Kara opts to take True Name Nemesis, uh, to nobody's surprise. Um, and uh, yeah, so Windy, if Windy's plan relies on deploying this Fever Division, he might just let Kara draw, because his plan might just be overfeeding her cards and be like, yeah, sure, you can have a bunch of cards, I don't care. Um, Draws a counter spell. I think we're just gonna see a pass here, keeping up force spike and incinerate. Uh, a little hurting from having a sound, the heavy drooping a basic mountain there, which um, I, I play a bunch of blue red and uh, the drooping a basic mountain that just does not feel great. It feels a little better in uh, windy stack because it's definitely a lot more. Uh, um, a lot more uh, a burn spell than something like Miley's does, but it's uh... okay. Just fires off the risk factor. I'm assuming that Windy just uses the force spike here, right? There is no like risk factor is a sufficiently like if you counter a three drop with your force spike, you're pretty happy, and uh, it's it's value is gonna rapidly decrease. Let's see, it does Windy peel a land. He does. It's not a second blue source, which is a little awkward. We'll see if now, yeah, he just opts to deploy the, immediately deploy the Fever Division. So. And uh, Kara feels obliged to fight off the Force of Will and uh, Peach the Psychotog, but now Kara doesn't have anything. Um, so it's possible that because your hand is already dipping so low, maybe you're just supposed to play the Fever Vision game, so let the Fever Vision resolve, and that leaves you with a Psycho token that you can deploy next turn. Because now Simeon is, uh, has one land in hand. Kar has one land in hand against Windy's hand of uh, two counter spells, one of which is uncastable, but it's gonna get cast eventually. A removal spell and the Bedlam Reveler, which is gonna like come down and make you sad at some point. It's the Bedlam Reveler is very far from being cast. It's on. It still costs seven mana at this point. But um... uh... I'm confused. Uh, did I? So, Fever Division was countered by Force of Will. Did already a turn go by and I missed it? I'm assuming, yeah, Wind just takes four from this uh, risk factor. Simeon then, Kara then deploys the Scolding turn that she had in hand. She's now, she's now has zero cards. I'm, I'm, I miss, I think, I think I misunderstood when things were happening. <laughs> Either way, oh, Windy draws a Brainstorm, which uh, he's not unhappy to draw, I think. He wouldn't mind drawing another blue source and also just having all this stuff. I'm assuming he just keeps high Ionize up. This looks like it's going to be a control game for Windy. This, this looks like he's probably just going to um, try to um, leverage the fact that he has a bunch of card advantage in hand and try to make sure that that brings him to victory. Uh, and by head advantage, it means the fact that he has five cards and Kara has, like, zero. Uh, I don't think anybody actually drew actual extra cards, but the way that it shows up, it's sh shaked up between Windy being on the draw and the Mulligans. Uh, um, his hand is stuck, and Kara's just isn't. 
Uh, Wind is considering a, a turn, a main phase to brainstorm, opts not to, passes the turn. Kara trying to decide if she wants to crack the scolding turn, decides to crack the scolding turn. Um, we'll, um, we'll see how that, uh, how that goes. Uh, finds a steam vents. Uh, The draw for the turn is uh, Tassiger. Tassiger is pretty solid. It's gonna get ionized, but yeah, Kara doesn't even opts to not cast it because she knows about the ionize from the thoughts is from earlier. Um, so that's that's pretty reasonable. She decided to go for um, ooh three lands was the brainstorm for Windy. That's brutal. Uh, he's gonna have to slog through them. He has no way to shuffle his library, so we're gonna have to see how that pans out. Him assuming he goes island go, yeah. Um, Steal. Okay, now he has now the bad one. costs six mana. Can if uh, Kara finds a threat that she can use to double spell, so chart a course uh, is not the worst. Uh, we're gonna see. We're gonna see it deployed here. I don't think Bind is gonna uh, is gonna counter. Yeah, no, it, he doesn't. Uh, I'm assuming Underground sees the pitch, and uh, we're, um, I presume we're gonna see an end of turn impulse for uh, for for Kara. Um, decides to impulse main phase, and if I'm th if I'm windy, I'm seriously considering uh, firing off an ionize here. Windy decides not to, and uh, which actually no, because he's not still not gonna have ionize and counter spell up next turn. Because I think a card on top of his deck is a mountain, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong. Um, which means, yeah, there's another mountain. So, okay, Windy managed to unbrainstorm lock himself, but uh, his hand still doesn't do anything. He still can't cast Battle Mavel. Battle Mavel costs 6 mana. Um, he's gonna have to find something to do eventually. Uh, Kara. Drew a dismember. Uh, yeah. Um, Kara has been main phasing uh, her spells a lot. Like even the impulse is something that could have been. Uh, I think would have been a lot better if cast uh, during uh, during uh, Windy's end phase. Because uh, then you are tying up mana on his turn if he decides to counter spell, which is unlikely, but it's possible. Uh, whereas, for example, uh, if uh, if uh, with Kara firing off the um, the impulse on Windy's turn, I think it might have been even correct for Windy to cast Ionize on it. She doesn't have any more mana to do stuff with, and. Uh, you are trading uh, mana for something that is very likely to find a threat, which is almost as good as for a threat. <laughs> as it turns out, the impulse didn't find the threat. Instead, found uh, I believe this lightning bolt, uh, and uh, Kara is really struggling to find uh, to find stuff. Okay, so Windy can now bad lamb level so chooses. He's probably not going to because his hand is stacked. Um, but he finally did also find another threat in this Vendillion click, which I'm assuming we're gonna see at we're gonna see cast at uh, Simeon's end step. I don't think you draw step click here. I think it would be a mistake. But okay, Simeon finds a Cabal therapy. I do not believe Windy will counter this. Decides to counter this. Wow. Oh, I guess that she knows about cards in in, uh, in Windy's hand from the Thoughts. 
So that makes a little bit more sense. Oh, but he has two counter spells. So like he can counter the next spell anyway. I think I think you're supposed to just let this go. Yeah. Uh so Ionize was the was the name of the card. And uh but now there's still this counter spell to contend with. And uh, uh, Kara kind of needs, uh, like, uh, is it the point where she either uh, plays the Tassiger, which is the only thing she's got going into the counter spell, or, uh, yeah, just uh, opts to just uh, play the Tassiger into the counter spell rather than let uh, Windy just fire off an enter and click. No, decides not to. Yes, decides to. Dredging on. Sorry, Delvin on uh, X Mage can be a frustrating experience. It's, it's not it's not great. Mm. Uh, there is no way that Windy lets this resolve, right? I guess, oh yeah, Kara is still trying to f find her way through this thing to cast, uh, to, to cast, uh, yeah, just, uh, Windy just has to fight off a counter spell there. Counter spell also means that Bedlam Reveler now costs only 4 mana. It is uh, probably not in his best interest to cast it quite yet. But I think we might be going for it, because he just decides to incinerate Simeon's face. <laughs> uh, I'm using Kara and Simeon interchangeably, and uh, that's because they she has like two different names on the Discord, and he had an X page, and then getting confused. Um... I'm hoping that that's... Uh... Uh, do you? There was a real question of casting uh, of casting click in response to your to your reveler trigger. But he opts not to. Uh, his battle on reveler. Uh, uh, cards were pretty like cluster, and uh, the bedroom ever eats a it's a dismember, and now we're kind of back to square one. Uh, Wind is holding a pile of lands in hand, and uh, Kara is holding a lightning bolt in hand, and we don't know where this game is going. <laughs> hey, hello. Hi. Uh, how did your game go? Unfortunately, Wolf is having uh, very serious internet issues and has to drop. I see. Uh, well, that's unfortunate, but it does mean I have a co-host now, so I'll uh, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll take it. <laughs> Um, um, it's, uh, that's unfortunate. Wafa has been uh, uh, an, in an integral part of uh, how these events work out. I'm watching uh, Windy versus Kara. Um, yeah, I'm gonna tune in. Yeah. Like in Windy it was up a game. He decided to go for a Bedlam Reveler, which drew a Ponder and uh, two lands. Kara has like uh, her hand is spent. She has like only a lightning bolt in the hand. Is the only card? And now there's this back to basics that uh, is gonna make her sad. I think that uh, when they found these back to basics of the ponder, Kara also draws a ponder. It's ponder is color. Uh, okay. Are you are you tuned in? Uh, I'm watching the stream, which is kind of awkward because it's behind. So I'm gonna oh. go into the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, please. Um, 
I am going to record Stuli Prince to a drop waffle. Done. All right. Well, I mean, Carrot managed to find the Gurmag Angler. That's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Windy doesn't have anything resembling an answer. Yet. Uh, which means now Kata has to, like, figure out how to cast the Gormag Angler, which, on X-Mage, casting a Dell spell is always, like, a little bit of a, will it happen, how does this work, what's going on, but we'll, uh, hopefully, hopefully we manage to, we manage to make it work, yeah, 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 she removes some cards from the graveyard, finally manages to make this, to put this Gormag Angler in play, and, um... We're gonna see what Windy's draws are, but uh, Skarmag Angler was a pretty fortunate draw off that Ponder. Windy's chilling on two lands, where he's gonna have to find uh, to find an answer to this thing in a hurry. The good news is he finds like a Vapor Snag, then yeah, he, he has this thing covered. Yeah, that's pretty much it. The, the Tempo Mirror has to be like very weird. So, Kara is, uh, is on less of a... Like, her deck is not as tempo -y as... Like, both of these are not really, like, pure tempo decks. Wind definitely, Wind is definitely has, like, more of a control band, and Kara's uh, seem to have more of a mid-range band. Um, but, yeah, like, the tempo meter can be definitely kind of weird. Uh, since you are here, uh, can you if you have, can offer a commentary for this? I'm gonna update like the texts, overlays, and stuff, which I was neglecting because I was alone. So, if you can, like, I don't know, say what's going on with the game while I finish doing this. Okay. So, Windy's playing a Storm Chaser Mage and and Git probing and Charlotte Corsing, so he's essentially probably trying to raise the angler. That's a, that's a pretty good, uh, I mean... I mean, it's a strategy that has worked for him in the past, let me put it this way. Carl's only at 9 life. Yeah, and he draws into Memory Lapse Force of Will, which could actually be very good. Yeah, no, that sounds decent. Possible that with the Soul Scar Mage to make a jump block once he can actually raise the angler. I think maybe. Ta da! Text. <laughs> All right. Um, the yeah, memory lapse keeps... force of will is a pretty stuck to hand. Uh, uh, the... We'll have to see what's going on. The Solskjaer's Mage is giving him some pressure. Uh, you want proactive spell with the Storm Chaser Mage rather than reactive spells. But on the plus hand, the source card means that, the, means that if he finds a burn spell, this Gormag Angler is basically just not a threat anymore. Like, now Bolt answers Angler, right? Because uh, you can block with the source card mage after... Uh, after, uh, like, you know... Source card mage becomes the 2-3, Gormag Angler becomes the 2-2 two, two permanently, and then you can block and be done with it. Yeah. Also, Karis drawing red spells and having no untapped red lands is yeah, not back, the best. Back to basics, doing what back to basics does. Yeah, no, it's... Um... Wind has a lot of mana, which definitely, like... He's, uh, I think, a uh, part of his uh, the reason that he's so out of gas was so earlier that uh, Kara was on like mono uh, stuff. Like, like Windy was on like had five cards in hand with Kara having like a land, 
Uh, and part of the reason is that Kara has drawn four lands and Windy has drawn nine. And uh, that's that's just taking his stall. Taking its stall. Um, the but Windy has uh, now has a pretty stacked hand. The problem is he kind of wishes honestly, like. It's awkward because like now these things are only swinging for two damage. If Korra had a red spell, she'd fire off the bolt, which would get memory lapsed, and then these things would get bigger. <laughs> Windy, if uh, but if Windy finds a spell that he can cast on his turn, <gasps> sorry about that. These threats are gonna be lethal. Um, Korra finds a radical idea, which is interesting. An uh, interesting it's a bit addition slow. to the deck. It is definitely a bit slow, but. It's something you can cast and you can, you can use to convert these red cards in your hand into, like, actual stuff. Uh, Windy opts to... Uh, Windy opts to uh, memory lapse it, which makes sense, I think. Uh, this is memory lapse as the almost a time walk, except you're taking five damage. Yeah, but he doesn't care. So if Windy draws a spell... He can cast a spell, force of will, and then swing for lethal. If 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 Kara swings, like I don't know that Kara can swing here, because if Kara swing swings, she she's there to a spell from Windy. Well, well I mean, she, go, she goes for it. No, she doesn't know that Windy only has a force of will in hand, but. If Windy throws one spell, Kara's just dead. He just need something he can cast. It doesn't get there. I guess that now we're gonna see the Soul Skirmage stay back to chomp the the the, um, the Gorma Gangler. His draw was dismissed in Rainforest. Uh, wind has been flooding miserably. Um, but yeah, I, so I think that his path to victory is he chumps this turn. Next turn he draws a spell that he can cast. Force of Wills it. And... Um, Might. And then the Storm Chaser Mage is lethal. Right? Probably. Or like just draws into a cantrip and then you're fine. Or, or, or a barn spell. I mean, yeah. Oh, never mind. Lightning yeah, Bolt. he's just dead. Yeah, he's just dead. Lightning Bolt kills the Soul Scar Mage and... Oh, wait, no, he has Force of Will in hand. Nah, sure. That's... That's a thing. I mean, Windy's deck is, like, rife with bolts. So, like, one additional draw step with this much mana is not, it's not nothing. Um, Windy decided... I mean, to... just dead now to, uh, to the... No, she's no, not. She, no, 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 no. This is this is Kara's turn. So, like the Soul Scar Mage, like the Storm Chaser needs to find like Windy needs to, again needs to find a spell. He's been in this position for like three turns in a row now, where he needs to draw a spell and then it's it's lethal. Actually, no, only last turn. But he has two turns when he needs to like not draw another land. Yeah, the Soulscrap Mage is gonna jump in front of the of the Gormag this turn. I think we're gonna see Windy opt to crack the Misty because I think that he just wants to maximize his chances of drawing something. Force of Will you cost really him one want life. To go is... down to three. Well, against the top out opponent, it's gonna kill you next turn anyway. Yeah. I mean, you can also always jump with the Storm Chaser next, next turn if you don't draw anything. Yeah, I suppose. 
the Dr Drew Neverland. I guess that now he has to chomp with the Storm Chaser and hope that he finds a burn spell at some point. This flood Yo. from Windy has been brutal. Yeah, he looked really good for him when I tuned into this game, and now yeah, it's just it's awful. Just, yeah, it's just like drawing 11 lands, and that's just not... So now he now his outs are, are down from a burn spell to a removal spell. Sorry, from uh, down from a spell to a burn spell. Drown Cut home from Simeon is gonna produce mana once. Um, the Gorma Gambler goes in, the Storm Chaser Mage blocks. Yeah, he probably can't even survive playing, uh, drawing an unsummon, because Kara can just recast Ga uh, the Angler at this point. Yeah, she has enough cards in the graveyard now. It's gonna cause the Drown Cut home to be permanently locked, but I don't think she cares. Well, you can play, play it for, like, Island Swamp, Exile 5 things. Oh yeah, right, 7, not 8. Sorry, I'm too used to hosting Treasure Cruise. <laughs> and another land. <laughs> and Windy's dead. <laughs> wow. That was insane. Was he up a game? Yeah, he was up a game, so we're going to game 3. Um, do the switch Ruski in the... In the overlay, because... Uh, Because uh, X Mage uh, mercifully switches places of people uh, between round after round. I don't understand why that's a thing. Yeah, uh, this one. deck, uh, uh, Windy's deck definitely bailed him out in game one by feeding him a price of progress that was just brutal. Like, Kara looked like she was doing fine, and then uh, suddenly Wind was like, "How about you take six? And then she wasn't fine anymore. It was not. It was not fine. Um, I have been there. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, no, it's uh... so Kara's hand has some random shocks and like some random lands. Oh, interestingly, she decided not to fetch red mana with her fetch. Which means that now she's out. She doesn't have any red mana, but she goes for a turn one Delver of Secrets. Uh, her hand is uh, a Thoughts is a Tormenting Voice, a Thoughts counter. So a couple of cantrips, a Thoughts is a Tormenting Voice. So I guess three cantrips and the Thoughts is. Windy and decides to start with Ancestral Recall, which is you know a way that you can start the game of Magic if you want to. That hand became drastically better. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I missed that part. Was he like a, 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 a strong? Was he like a bunch of mulligans? What's what happened there? Oh no, he just uh, he didn't have ancestral in his opener. I think. Oh, and then he had ancestral in his opener. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, that's gonna make your hand better. So now he has uh, four lands. Uh, all right. I guess it. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Kara draws her red mana. Kara does draw red mana. Fires off a thoughts is. I'm assuming cryptic is the p is the fake here. Wind is drawing a lot of lands again, which uh, is not great. But um... I mean, I think he's the control in this matchup. Yeah, it's Kinda. like not the worst. So, does Kara is Kara obliged to take the Jelectrode because it can just kill the Delver if she doesn't peel spell for a couple turns? No, okay. Decides to take Thermal Alchemist. That is a good take, actually. Yeah, that card is very good in Windy's deck. Yeah, for sure. 
Uh, I'm assuming that Windy is going to cast uh, a the Gia Electrode on this turn. Kara yeah. still uh, stubbornly refusing to have spells uh, at, on the opponent's turn. Just, just I refuses mean, to. She's just no. <laughs> your opponent has counter spells. Is tapped out. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, but you know, you know his hand. Plus, like, what is I he mean, gonna do? Counter your thoughts, coward? Ah, yes. Uh, oh, hi, Elo. Uh, we're watching currency. Me, I'm playing the Stampo Mirror. They're one and one. Um, Windy's uh, Windy's deck just feed him a behemoth price of progress in game one, and then just uh, fed him twelve lands in game two, so he lost. Um, and uh, there's a reef bolt coming off suspend. I think it's just just probably going to the oh, it's probably going to the Delver, right? Yeah, I don't think you can take the chance of that, that thing flipping and sticking yeah. around. Yeah, it's a little awkward because like the gel electrode potentially is uh um they like, can answer it, but it's you need the slow. you need a lot of things to go right. You need the gel electrode to survive. And you need uh, the Delver not to flip. Which granted, like based on Kara's hand, we know that that would happen, but <laughs> I mean, unless, you know, this radical idea finds, like, a bolt or something, but... You probably have to command him voice here, right? Yeah, chuck, chuck a bunch of lands. Yeah, chuck, like, an island. What? I'd actually keep the island. What do you chuck? I guess creeping tarpit is too slow. She no, decided to. I chucked chuck the badlands. She decided to check the radical idea. No, I want to hit the badlands because the badlands allowed me to draw a bolt and cast it on this turn. Eh. That's the that's that's my reasoning. I don't agree with. I definitely don't agree with checking radical idea. I'll say this much. <laughs> yeah. No. I'd... Like I, 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 I'd want to keep the basic around just so that you have like because it's a basic island and you know that the opponent has back to basics. Yeah, uh, Blood I Moon. suppose if you want to play against back to basics and Blood Moon. <laughs> no. Oh, uh, I think Kara misclicked. I think that that was not what she wanted to discard. Uh, that's actually very possible. Eh, shit happens. Yeah, no, she she's saying she's saying in chat, red mage. I effed up. Tell chat I love them. <laughs> um, I think it. She was she meant to this kind of land, and um, she didn't. Uh, her hand is very powerful, though. She has an opt and the treasure cruise, so like, she might manage to get out of this uh, of this uh, hole that she has uh, found herself into. The scripted command will probably have something to say about the treasure cruise, but oh yeah, no, find the lightning strike. Do you cryptic command this? You probably do, right? This Jalactus is the only pressure that you have in hand. I guess you have this Delver of Secrets. Does he just... Is he just gonna, just gonna let it go? I, I mean, it's, ba it's on Kara's based on, turn, right? Based on Kara's hand, he would absolutely need to let it go, but he doesn't know that, obviously. Do you yeah. just bounce the creeping torpid or uh, or do you just draw a card? Yeah, he just draws. I think I think he draws a card. Yeah, and I think it's pretty reasonable. <laughs> draws it's another hard land. not to draw a card when you when you don't have when you don't have a good bounce target. 
I mean, Creeping Tarpit is not the worst, right? Because it's gonna come back into play tapped. So, like, it does symbolize a decent amount of uh, styming her as uh, resource management. So, I think that the Treasure Cruise might just be game over. They both have basically only lands in hand. This Jalectrude is a very slow clock. The... I guess that... It depends on what this Treasure Cruise draws. But this is, the draws from this Treasure Cruise are in any way reasonable. This is gonna be tough for uh, for Windy to grind through it. The... I don't know. I don't know that I agree with, like, keeping Lightning Strike in, in the graveyard here. As opposed to what? As opposed to delving it away and having like actual mana to do things with this turn. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, but like, what else is she gonna do? Eh. Like, like she doesn't. She doesn't know that she's gonna draw one drop. There can't be that many in her deck. Finds an inquisition of Kozilek, which uh, is about not to have a target, honestly. Um, Wind is probably just gonna go Delver of Seated, Soul Scar's Mage, go. <laughs> and Simeon uh, see, see is gonna fight this Inquisition and be like, oh, I don't have a target for it. I'm sad now. Um, but. But that Crackling Drake is, the crackling gonna Drake is pretty high. It is it's, not bad. It's castable. That is the bar that you have to clear for that card to be good. You need to be able to cast it. And she clears that bar. In fact, she can do both. She can go Badlands, she can go Badlands, Creeping Tarpit. She can... Mm. Words. Yeah, she can fight the Inquisition of Kozilek first. This is the point I'm trying to make. I think I would have probably yeah. gone Polluted Delta Fetch Basic Swamp there, but... That's the other reason to... If Kraken Drake is in your deck, you're also more incentivized to... Um, yeah, the Inquisition of Cozy Lake Weaves. But yeah, you're more incentivized... I guess it doesn't matter, actually, when I think about it. How big is, how big is Drake gonna be? It's probably gonna be huge. 10-4. That, that's, that's, that's the large boy. <laughs> that's a two-turn clock. That that it, it is. It's important to note though that if the wind draws a bolt, the gel electrode can finish the Drake off. Or even like a pillar of flame. The gel electrode can actually just finish the Drake off. So like yeah. like all all of Wind is burn spells, uh, thanks to the gel electrode they're all live. But also the Soul Scar Mage helps. I mean, yes and no. Like, this thing is never yeah, gonna. I mean, like, you can just. Oh, you, you can, can just, just ping slowly down. ping it down. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Does he On find. Hand, he doesn't really have time. <laughs> he, he does not, but. Does Delver flip? He's, he's gonna throw a line. Oh, God. Oh, Jace the Mind Sculptor, eh? Okay. <laughs> That, that is, is that is that is that is a pretty reasonable card. Slams the Jace, bounces the Drake, almost certainly. Slams with the theme. Um, the Soul Scar, well, I mean, slams for three with uh, the Soul Scar and the Delver. You do bounce the Drake, right? Like. 100%. You, like you can't, you can't like hope to brainstorm and draw something good. You just have to bounce it. Yeah. Yeah. No, Jace was a strong, strong, strong flip. I think that what Windy needs, like if Windy flips this Delver next turn, Kara said. Nine virtual life because this Jalector is gonna ping her for one. If um, if Windy finds flips this Delver next turn, I think he might be in business because like that means he's also gonna have a spell for the Soul Scarred Mage, uh, which in turn uh, 
means that uh, he's gonna probably attack for five. The Jace can bounce. Uh, yeah, no, okay. Finds a daze, which is not great, but oh, no, that's Kara's hand. Yeah, nice daze. But the Crackling Dig is gonna keep drawing her cards. That's that's the other thing. The Crackling Dig does draw a card every time you play it. Yeah, but I think he can like he can absorb that uh, card as mean, advantage just bouncing it with right? Jace and just kill. I mean, Kara still at 10 life, which is not as zero. Like, um, it's like, you know, like, when this clock is not super fast. If he, if he flips the Delbert this turn, then his clock can be super fast. But he needs to do that. <laughs> well, we're gonna see what his draw is. Plus, Kara can also fight off this creeping tar pit to kill the Jace next turn if she wants to. I guess the Jace, I guess she's gonna have her mana set up by recasting this crackling deck because there's no way that Jace doesn't bounce. Uh, I guess that's not true. If Windy finds a burn, a burn spell, it's probably going to the crackling Drake. I mean, it's either that or like just go face. So bounce the crackling Drake. Try to get in. I guess it depends. So let's say that he draws lightning bolt, right? Lightning bolt. Yeah, in the, in that case, Delver that is flipped. Delver flips, attacks for three. Solskas mage attacks for two. Jelectro deals two. So that's exactly lethal if he draws lightning. Bolt. So Which I guess that yeah, almost, I guess that if that's yeah. the case, he just does that. And there's like pretty much all burn spells in his deck, probably, except for... No, like Pillar of Flame, for example, couple. would not be lethal, would come one shot. And I think actually if you draw Pillar of Flame, you just kill the Drake. Yeah. And, and because that also unlocks, you the, unlocks the possibility of like brainstorming with Jace, which is not, you know... Same worst things to do. Yeah. Interesting. The side so far of the Crackling, the Jalectro, that the Crackling Drake. I mean, he no. can actually buy himself a turn doing that. I mean, In I'm theory. assuming the first attack. If it lets the Crackling Drake attack, it's probably gonna attack Jace the first time, right? Yeah, Brainstorm with Jace is pretty good because he has a Mystery in Forest in hand. Like, that's. Uh, I don't think he revealed, so I'm assuming there is another land on top. Yep, there's the land. Okay, no, he just goes for the brainstorm. He does not get rewarded for it really at all. But he gets like the one redraw of Serum Visions. But... Yeah, the Serum Visions yeah. might do the thing. But the Heresy Monclos is more uh, is more mana, and the Serum Visions is like a Jalectro attack. So there is that. If it was a spell of the Serum Vision, the Jalectrude can kill the Crackling Drake, honestly. So, like... That ain't nothing. Like, it's not going to, but... 
you don't often see the Soul Scar Mage Electrode Wombo Combo going on, but <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> it's it's working. It's not that bad. <laughs> Obviously, we need to do another lead because that seems to be everything that he's doing. <laughs> And now I'm assuming uh, I'm assuming he dumps the curious homunculus. So the Jelectrode can kill the Drake next turn. Oh and now he can just suicide the Hisharin because then it's gonna kill the Drake if the car decides to block. Yeah, and she, she just can't. She just decides not to block at all. So Kara goes down to 7. I'm assuming that... Uh, so Wind is going to deploy the Curse Homunculus. And then... Uh, which is going to immediately flip. I mean, this is where you go... Uh, attack Crackling Drake Time Walk. Attack Crackling Drake, kill you. Two attacks from the Crackling Drake are not lethal. I guess they will be. Uh, no, they wouldn't be, because uh, Crackling Drake has another uh, Jelectrol ping coming its way. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually true. That Jelectrol is going to kill uh, Crackling Drake. Um, maybe not, because of this collective brutality, but... Oh, that's true. Yeah, Collective Talis expected. is probably gonna kill the Jelectrode, if I were to guess. Uh, I can't see, it's not should telling me the targets. And then, presumably, does she have enough mana to also activate Creeping Tarpit? I'm assuming she does. That is not yeah, she targeted active Jelectrode. Okay. I mean, the Hidden Simonculus is pretty scary. It is targeted at the Soul Scar Mage. That also works because that means that, uh, yeah. I mean, that breaks up the combo, right? But uh, then, wait a second. Then late. external Jelector can just do the last ping and kill the Crackling Drake. <laughs> yeah, it was too late to break up the combo. Yeah, I think you needed to kill the Jelector there. Interesting. So, probably the Creeping Tarpit kills Jace, the Crackling Drake deals 8 to Windy. And, uh... I mean, I guess... I mean, the, the Crackling Drake is not gonna be able to block, if because Windy's gonna untap with his Jelectron, so, like... He, it has to attack, and at that yeah, point, you have need... to... Yeah, you need to kill the Jace. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I... Jace can't be allowed to leave. Yeah, and he's probably and she's she's probably gonna attack with both. It looks like she she's attacking with both. No, I, okay. No. Yeah, the having Drake goes at Windy. I think you. Have, I don't think you have enough for the two play around stuff at this point. Like you're kind of I mean, if, the... if Windy has a had a bolt yeah. at any point, I, like... he would have used it. Nothing has happened for three turns. I think you, you it's, you're pretty safe to assume that you're both on blanks. Like, Except you know, Kara isn't on lands. She's on lands and days. Days, days is a little worse than a land at this, this board, I think. I mean, if Windy ever casts a spell, she can daze it, force him to pay one. And have Crackling Drake get one bigger. But she's she's not going to have a Crackling Drake. Yeah. I think Drake is going to die. <laughs> but you know, in theory. <laughs> Are we, like is this Delver better... finally going to flip? Is the, is, it's actually happening. I guess he would have set it up with the Jace. I don't think he did. I think he just shuffled away a couple of lands, but...
I mean, the 3 4 what prowess you... from the Voracious Reader is actually pretty scary. Flips a chain lightning. Oh, yeah, this game is over. Is this lethal? 3, 6, 7. Yeah, no, it's just over. <laughs> Alright, this was real close, but. Um... So. What do you, how likely do you think that the Ser Erip Mavnefola game is still going? I mean, they're all they're still playing. They're still playing. <laughs> they're in game two. Hey, hey, hey! Game two was really fun. Game three was fucking awful. <laughs> uh, I a game two like watching Windy's draws was brutal. He drew so many lands. <laughs> so yeah. Many lands. That was that was way tighter than it, I had any right for it to be. Basically, what happened what happened there was that I just game three I just flooded out so hard. I like was drawing a ton of cards and I so just so was like lands. you drew the same number of lands as far as I knew as far as I saw. Like the Windis was also like drawing a billion lands. Other than right. the ancestral Especially... start, I just drew so many more cards than Windy though. Yeah. That's uh, fair, I guess. I mean, I brainstormed with Jace. And thought Serum Visions and neither found Rebel. The Jace Lane um, found a Serum Visions and two lands. I think, yeah, but like, like a game yeah. where I like, I, I like, I treasure cruised, I uh, tormented voice saying. Yeah, but I all like, of yeah. those are not actually card advantage, right? Like the total it's number precious. of cards that you're precious. drawing is the same. Yeah. Um, I, I saw more cards than, than Windy did, yet I still flooded horribly. Why did that. you the... decide to pitch the um, radical idea to Tormenting Voice over land? Because you were already fun um, in a decent bit. Did you remember the radical idea was in your graveyard? Um, yeah, I didn't until like the second to last turn there. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I pitched radical idea because I had like... My, my deck is sort of built to run on three or four lands, and at that point I had three lands in play, I believe, and I was like, I kind of want this land, and I value it pretty highly, but so I'm going to put the You had idea. two lands in hand, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Maybe I'm wrong. When I cast, when I cast Tormenting Voice, uh, that was the... Hmm, let me think about it. I might not be remembering it correctly, but I definitely thought that I could pitch on... What it probably was, was I was planning on pitching a land to to cast the radical idea so i could still draw a card out of the radical idea and yeah i it. think so uh, my re my read at that point and maybe i'm just wrong but like uh, my read was i am flooding so i'm gonna convert as many lands into other cards as possible so like i would have probably pitch land the radical idea and also pitch land the tormenting voice but maybe i'm just misremembering things what is going on with this serenity of game uh blade the colossus just had a sword splasher pointed at it that's a thing that can happen in this game. A can't oh. reveal standstill, which is going to get cast, I think. So what's this Dark Depths? Uh, what's the situation on this Dark Depths? Exactly? Uh, I, I think the situation of this Dark Depths is that it's there, and the Nephola has a bunch of mana, and they are going to... And Nephola's about to remove four counters from that thing. I think the Nephola is about to remove four counters from that thing. <laughs> Just the old-fashioned way. And step away in Nephola. Uh, yes. I, 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 I don't know. It has to be Nephilus, right? Because Serenium stopped in mana. Nephilus took an extra turn. Nephilus took an extra turn. Oh, from the Temporal Master. Yeah. yeah, but that was a little bit ago. Like, um, Eric Mo just untapped. Yeah. Suspended so Ancestral Vision. Okay. To be fair, Where there is this it? tech edge that says this Dark Depths is not gonna flip. Oh, yeah, there is a Dark Depths. There's a tech edge there, yeah. This kitchen thinks is the win condition. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Nephilus kitchen thinks. <laughs> Set Eric map with the your opponent's kitchen thinks control. Yeah. The other bad news is that it looks like it looks like a pretty like. Set map looks in pretty solid command of this game. By the way, this is game two. Uh, and the Nephilus won game. Uh -huh. Oh, oh God. God! Yeah, this is the mono blue it's control. <laughs> Is this lands? Is Nephila playing lands? Hold on. Wait. What's the graveyard look no, like? Nephila is... I mean, Nephila is putting a lot of lands in, like, in which I, they, she has a lot of lands, but... Fork. Uh, fork, regrowth, mana leak, dark, faded... I think it's just five color control. 
Yeah, I'm. I'm really. I'm this is. Colors. This is spicy. I don't, black. I don't see black. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. It might be just four color control. What's the four? Color? That's what you call? Uh, no, you ask him for the point spread? I'm asking yeah. what the fork is for. I'm just like... I don't understand the fork. Sort of just watching Nephila, like, probably gonna... Just, just, Nephila's gonna make a uh, Merit Lage, and then it's gonna get hit with a bounce spell. Like, that's, oh, that's yeah. what's gonna happen here. So her points are uh, uh, Time Walk, Intuition, Dig Through Time, True Name, Nemesis, Library of Alexandria. Okay, I've opened the chat on my... What is yeah. this? And what she, is this? she is playing Kainayo Centuro of Maladies. I think uh, that's what this is about. Oh, right. That. Oh, uh, uh, that... So this... that. Wait, no, I'm she's not one... <laughs> But, but wh yeah, why would she be playing four color non black without the gay boys? The best gays. I'm amazed that the standstill didn't get cast. Are both players forgetting that there's a tech engine play? I. what? I think it's... both players are forgetting that there's a tectonic engine play. Uh, the I mean, cast, right? Eric doesn't have any reason to uh, tech edge uh, Nephola until she has sunk all of the mana that. But I mean, the, the standstill. The standstill could have gotten cast, which means that in order to present any form of win condition, Nebula has to produce a spell. Oh, no, yeah, you're right. Maybe, maybe he did forget. I don't know. Also, that's a thespian stage. Yeah, the like, thespian right... stage here makes me think that both... <laughs> that's the package. <laughs> like, why, why is there a thespian stage right there? It just got gotten with the uh, power problem. Oh, uh, that makes sense. So the second stage is going to copy this Horizon Canopy. Most definitely. Yeah. I'm, Wait, I'm... so how did this Thespian stage enter the battlefield? Our promise. It is like... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. There it's was an hour of promise that was cast. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking, yeah, and this blue deck not playing the standstill yet is <laughs> confusing to me. Yeah. Maybe because of the Ancestral Vision at all. Yeah, uh, I guess that he's gonna, the Ancestral Vision is gonna break it, uh, is gonna, like, auto-break, like, he doesn't want to break his own standstill with an Ancestral Vision. Yeah. I mean, at least, yeah, like, the other the other card that really should be coming down soon is that Batter Skull. Because right now, what... I'm not sure <clears throat> yeah, I think Nephila goes by they, based on their Discord. Yeah. Uh, that, yes, I have been horrible at trying yeah. to remember that, but uh, I've, I've been trying really hard. <laughs> uh, but um, yes, they, but yeah. they go by they. Uh, yeah. I, I just, yeah. like, heard she called them. I'm, just for clarity and... Yeah, no, 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 you're, you're perfectly right. It's entirely on me. I am, and I just suck. <laughs> okay, Nephola has had okay, enough. Game three. Yeah, uh, Nephola, game three. <laughs> we, we go to game three. Eric Mab had seven cards in hand. Nephola had zero. This was good. They went on for a while, and uh, then they were like, no, let's just. Uh... Petrified Fields and Sage would have put Mab in. Oh, actually. Yeah, you guys offer commentary. I'm going to. Uh... Hi, oh, yeah, Johnny Goldman, Neph 65. I'm sorry that I didn't see you earlier. Um, hey, Nephila won't give me permission to see their hand. Also, that's a tabernacle. Like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Ephraim's hand, and oh, I yeah, see I the tabernacle. Yeah, there's a the tabernacle, tabernacle on a pendant veil in, in his right deck. there. Also, I would not have kept this hand. Like, in, unless that expedition map is getting, like, Ancient Tomb, I would not have kept this hand. Yeah, if... Uh... If Nephila has a petrified field, it may have been better to get Because then you just have the Dark Death combo. There's nothing. Yeah, I'm like... I really wish Nephila would give me permission to view their hand. It's Island, Field of Ruin, Iron Eyes, Vastwood Seer, Supreme Verdict, Tireless Tracker, Sylvan Carry at it. Uh, Nafola yeah. has given me permission to see her, to see their hand. Uh, right. Eripmap yeah. hasn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eripmap has given me 
Yeah, Eretmov is sitting on Island, Tabernacle, Inkwell, Leviathan, Negate, Devastation, Tide, Spell Snare. The Sire of the Tracker is. Uh, well, it's going to be an issue. Yeah. It is going the distance. Of, it's a well. It's it's a lot it of might. pressure, and the only way the like, Epermov doesn't have an answer for it at all. Epermov has a devastation tide. Yeah, but devastation tide is just going to like bounce it. Yeah, and in between, then he like uh, they're going to take four damage, five damage, once or twice. Like they're, they're is going, he going to take twenty. Is he going to take twenty damage? <laughs> Because that's no, what he cares about. The, <laughs> yeah. The thing is, I don't think with like looking at Epermov's hand, Epermov has almost oh. no interaction if Nephila can okay. uh, yeah. actually see. Epermov has going. finally given me permission to see his hand. Yeah. If and, you, if uh, you, uh, the uh, only answer is a devastation pop. He's, he he he's fine. He has a tabernacle. He's going to find some nonsense to do with it. That devastation yeah. is not resolving. Yeah. yeah. Unless Expedition Map goes and gets Ancient Tomb literally this turn. Yeah. Um, also Mystic Confluence. Yeah. So there's a Panoptic Mirror in Neffel's hand. Oh, uh, I mean... Uh, what? Panoptic Mirror yeah. plus Time Walk is lethal. It's a lethal. I yeah. mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's a combo. It's just not something I expected to see in a Highlander deck that looks to be mid-rangey. Yeah. Yeah, I will, sure that, it strikes me more of a, like, a control thing. Yeah. Sure, hell there. Maze okay, that's a Maze of Eth, yeah. So, uh, not really. That, that's a field run. That Maze of Eth isn't doing anything. Oh, uh, yeah. Didn't even see that. Um, yeah. Are, are I'm surprised, like... I don't I'm... understand that these, uh, this expedition map in Eric Mosheim. <gasps> like, it doesn't seem... That There's great. no reason to kill this tabernacle with a field run. Yeah. You have a clock. Because, yeah, Nephila can just pay it. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And then it just lets Nephila in for even more pressure. If well, something Cariata was going to die anyways, you should have used I mean, you can use the Sylvan Cariata to pay for her for, for itself every turn. Yeah. yeah, it didn't do that. It just I mean, if your plan is to eventually field of ruin this tabernacle, that works. But yeah, I mean... Honestly, it's not even like the damage from the stylist I had that was scaring me if I was Sheriff as much so as uh, all the all the card draw that it's signifying. One confusing part for me. Oh, that's that's Nephila, the field her, Nephila knows about the maze of it. Like, oh, yeah. Why are you blowing the field of ruin on the tabernacle? Right. Maybe the Nephila is anything. The only the only reason I could think of that is Nephila wants to go wide later, but oh, this hand. Yeah, with yeah. your supreme I mean, like, verdict, I, uh, planeswalker hand, you want to go wide? I mean, that's that's the issue. I can't see Nephila's hand, so I don't know what's going. Oh, on. Right. So her hand. So sorry, that hand is uh, uh, panoptic mirror, mystic confluence, a supreme verdict, uh, uh, ionize, Nisa, vastwood seer, and wall of omens. Yeah. I would use. So, I would just use the carry added to keep the tile tracker. And yeah, and I would. I, I would have left. Well, yeah, I would have held up mana here this going going full shields down is not gonna work yeah. i also just wouldn't have yeah but like what is eric Pop's gonna do his deck is not capable of casting cards eric Pop has devastation tied in hand so he's going to bounce and then probably hit a counter later that he can counter it with i don't right? think or countering uh, countering I mean, like casting or... devastation tides of this turn does anything like i think no, the no, maze no. of it is how it stays high because like he yeah. if it, like, you you can't yeah. devastation tide and just tap out for it. You need to be able to counter the spell on its way back. Yeah. Ether eyes. What? Um, Wait. Welcome, welcome to Seinfeld. You need to play some bad bounce spells in order to actually be able to. <laughs> so that plays right. This isn't this. This is uh, as as Epermuff described it. This is Seinfeld, but actually attempting to win the game. Otherwise, you know, in my opinion, it should be called Cheers. No, this deck, this deck is like it's deck is like a Seinfeld with a combo finish. It's uh, um, like he was like, I want to play mono blue, but then I don't want to lose every single game that the Goblin guy just put on the stack. How do I do that? And that's the solution that he arrived to. So there's a Jace yeah. in this hand that isn't going to work. Yeah. 
So we gotta see what happens. Well, I mean, the board is stable now, so I think that, uh, like, it might be just correct for Nephola to just, like, let this Tireless Tether do its thing for a while and uh, draw some cards. I feel like you probably want to cast this here. Yeah. I think playing Nissa here is the right call. Yeah, well, that's fine, that's fair. Uh, Arip, oh, that's resolved? Yes. Yeah, because uh, counters in hand are negate and spells. Uh, power sync. I mean, power sync would have countered it. Yeah, power sync would counter it. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that we didn't see a power sync there. Yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised. I am too. not certain what either of these players are doing. To be completely. I guess that his plan is that resolve whatever. At some point, I'm gonna devastation tide with some sort of counter backup, and we're gonna take it out from there. But that's gonna be a while. How much longer? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna ask this quickly. How much longer do you think is on the match? Because I wanted to step away for a minute. Uh, oh, wow. they're gonna be they're gonna be going for a bit. Cool. I'm gonna go step outside for a minute and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in, indulge in nicotine. You, you do that. Tech is probably gonna kill the steam guns eventually. Not quickly, I'll be back in a minute. I don't know that we're gonna have three rounds today. I will be, I will be perfectly honest. Uh, this game, it looks like, it looks like it's lasting forever, and uh, um, I will actually have to go at some point. I, I don't know when yet, but we might have to just play round three off the air if uh if it comes down to that i mean that works yeah i mean if erimov is going to keep honestly if erimov is going to keep bringing this deck and we might have we might, we might want to enforce some sort of clock policy we didn't last week, and uh, I am uh, fine. Like, you know, I don't want to, like, spring, uh, oh, we have a clock now on people uh, out of nowhere, but it actually was not, because it had not been a problem. And uh, it looks like it is a problem now, so... I thought my match was slow. I was like, should I concede because of the video and... No, 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 I mean, just play through your outs. It's just yeah, that... Uh... We, we noticed that there is a... I mean, I still almost lost that. Okay, so Fires of the Jays. This is definitely going to get power sunk. Or negated. No. Excuse me? What the... Paramap, are you alright? <laughs> What's going on? Are you conscious? Do you have a pulse? Like, great deal. Is he is he on the plan or is this devastation tide is gonna do its thing I or I will be. lose this game? Is that what's going on? I wouldn't be because it doesn't kill anything. Back on the table. No, but it's fine. You you just hold up a counter spell. You can't hold up a counter spell. Nepal has like. Well, to be fair, I think that when this plan was hatched. Uh, the mana was in a position where he, he would be able to hold a counter spell. The problem is that Nephilim has been on a bunch of extra cards, which is, so that they have been hitting all of their land drops. I mean, I mean Nef uh, Aramath is still not at the point where you can even cast damage. Because the Mason doesn't make mana. No, no, no. I mean, no, he, he does. Uh, uh, he has uh, he, yeah. he did that five lands. But... He, he, we, have five, we have six lands right now. Yeah, we have six lands. But, like, you need, like, eight. Yeah. But I absolutely would not have lost this Yeah, I don't understand what's going because on. Because the devastation died, like, this has to go on a stack now. Because you're just going to die. Gets me his card, uh, and this game is over. <laughs> yep. 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 Oh, spells, Ned, oh, counting me, Skalk. I mean, 
this, I mean, this game is probably still over. Yeah, I, I think I agree. This game is, is definitely over, but... Now, casting a cast chase could be right back on this board state. With a Jace presenting a clock because Jace can just... Yeah, I think you just put the Jace on the board, on the board, and... You can get the, you can get the Nessa down, too. Yeah, but, like, Jace is the priority, for sure. Because, like, Jace is gonna pressure him in a way that is not successful. So, like, yeah, well, it can be treachery, or it can be, like, Maze yeah. of Eath, well, or whatever. I mean, that's why I say cast the Nissa. Because if he has a Force of Will, then you want the Nissa to get countered. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Here's the Jace. I think yeah, after yeah. Eric Mob not countering anything for three turns, Neff has to be convinced that he's, like, on blanks yeah. somehow, yeah, but... I I, mean, I also wouldn't have tapped Island Island. Also not fair. With or not with a uh, not with an Island Island hand. What? What? What just happened? Uh, they did a rollback. They did a rollback. I right, someone uh. was misclicked on the uh, Jace activation. Okay. Yeah, I think on this board I would probably start blasting the Jace, honestly. Oh, sorry, I, I see why I see why the Jace uh I see why the Nissa came after the Jace here. Because the uh Jace brainstorm the Nissa can shuffle. Yeah, 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 Nissa's gonna shuffle, yeah, I know you're right. Mm. After exile, Jace went forward. I'm surprised that the panoptic meter didn't go back to the deck. The panoptic meter is just gonna just the hand size. That is fair. Same with the Supreme Verdict, I imagine. That is also fair. Leave Savannah up? Nope. Oh. Finds a forest. Assuming that there is a forest to find, there might not be. Put a forest into play. Uh, no, it's, it goes to your hand, but yeah, there, there, well, there is just no leftover forest in no, the no left stack. Yeah. Uh, Nepla hadn't played a land yet. Yeah, no, they yeah. hadn't. And yeah, uh, yeah. I think I think it's just that their that deck only has two forests, which is reasonable. It's yeah. a four color deck. I'm surprised it has two. Yeah. They also put their Bloodstained Mire back up. They draw this Jace Brainstorm. Yeah, I mean, the, the Nisa was going to shuffle. I think Jace is going to start going up. When you're gonna discard the extra hard to hands eyes anyway, and you want to close up the game, I think that that's that's what you should be doing. How much does Echo Leviathan cost? Nine. Uh, no. A Not bunch. Yeah. I mean, it's never gonna resolve, but. Um... It would have resolved that turn if it cost seven. Yeah, no, you're right. But no, it costs yeah. C. It costs nine, yeah. It costs a million, yeah. You know, I have seen. Uh, um... I have seen it. I've I've seen it go on the stock the fair way. I have too. I've casted. I've casted the fairway before. It's not my letter. Okay, here's a fact of fiction. I'm not going to try and predict what the split's going to be because oh, it doesn't matter. Just ionize. Yeah. <laughs> the split is going to be ionize. Yeah. Or <laughs> if ionize got cast. If, ionize finally if, got cast. If Eric Mav really wants us to resolve, uh, he's just going to negate this. Yeah, oh. he, he is a he can. Oh, so I see what happened. Nissa didn't shuffle because Nissa didn't search. Or Nissa didn't find a force because it never searched during the gate. I think and still it's, the library is still going to get shuffled if you actually search it and then fail to find. It, but it didn't search. Oh, she, she, Nephola just opted not not to search. Okay. Because, yeah. because Nephola wanted the blood team I guess. They just do the blood team <laughs> again. Okay, mana leak. Logic not. Into the oil is is a way to answer this Jace eventually. Mm -hmm. Which is why, yeah. Muta Vault Island. Okay. So is the Muta Vault. The Muta Vault can attack. Um... Okay, here we are. I can see the tire. I think I think uh, Eppermouth needs that Muta Vault to do it because if you bounce Jace and then like you have to play games with Power Sync to counter it. But logic not. 
Actually, I was logging on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll see what the split is, but... Uh, what was the split? Uh, uh, Isle 1 going to Graveyard... Oh. Logic knocked so the Logic Knot Immutable to the Actually, Graveyard, into the Royal Island, and Malik to the end. Yeah, Ephraimov yeah. didn't take Logic Knot Mutable, which is the line, I think. No, I think it is into the Royal. Like, I think you, you need to put whatever pile into the Royal goes in. I think if you, if your opponent splits four cards and into the Royal, you still have to take into the Royal. It is so integral to what you're trying to do, to have this into There's the Royal. The That's thing is, with both, yeah. with both Jace and oh, Nissa in play, I don't know if Epimath can really close this game. Denise is not as big of a deal because you can attack her down with your... Uh, like, you haven't figured it out. Nisa's not as lethal as Jace is. This TNN resolves, by the way. Yeah, this TNN resolves. I mean, this game has been open for a while. Yeah. Yeah, this game isn't... I'm, I'm going to call players it attempts, now. Yeah. Despite both players' attempts. Yeah, Epimath needs to, like, hit... Pop, like, hit... hit one of the combo options because otherwise yeah. Nephila's got this game in the bag. Does yeah, but like Tinker doesn't do it. Stuff? Polymorph doesn't do it. Does Aramon run all his stuff? I don't think he I don't think he does. Uh, I think he does that on disc though. So uh, if it's not like immediately that next turn. But this doesn't yeah, this kill the planeswalker, so I think the oh, only way Epimav Epimav can win here is well, getting rid of the two creatures in play and then getting blight steel with haste, um, that's not yeah. happening. But I also don't yeah. think that that's a thing that yeah. this deck is um, capable of doing. Devil just doesn't cast the TNN because it doesn't. They don't need to. Mm -hmm. Which is fair. No reason to. Happily, it's a long board. And like this, Mr. Factor is going to get activated in the past. Nephila has this game within three turns, I think. Nephila has this game now. Deck. Assuming I think, has nothing, Nephila has this game now. Yeah. Epimav does have Aetherize, which does yeah. matter here. Yes. Uh, um, yeah. Right? Which, um, which it might not. Well, I mean, with a Mono League and a Power Sync as backup, I think, like, like uh, I, I think, I think that's just enough, but... Yeah, we'll so see, right? The uh, thing that probably happens is that Nephila declares attacks for lethal. Mm -hmm. The Tech Edge animates the Mistress Factory, the Path Exile the Mistress Factory. If Eretmap yeah. doesn't, Eretmap can't float the mana. Mm -hmm. They cast Etherize, Etherize gets the Supreme Will, and the game ends. Alternatively, Chandra, I guess. I don't claim to know what's going on in these lists. Yet. I don't think anybody does. No. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Aripmav has had yeah, enough, and uh, Nephola takes the cake home to one. All let's, right. Uh, round two. Round two. All right. Let's uh, let me just punch the results in, and uh, we can get started as fast as possible. So Nephola. Gets it two one per round two. All right, so Nephola versus Windy. Uh, okay. Um, Kara versus Tulip, and uh, Aripmav gets to stay here with me. I will try to make my so, uh, match quick. Hey. <laughs> <sighs> are, are both of you here? I am here. All right. We should we should do a quick break. Um, hey, Tulip. Quick break. Uh, um, we quick should, break. We should for, probably do a quick. For what? Water bathroom. Nephilim just asked for one in chat. All oh, right. Sorry, I didn't see that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm, 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 how about that? I'm also gonna take two minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go pick myself a cup of water. Uh, you guys, uh, you guys entertain chat or or not? Yeah, I'm entertaining chat until I need to go around. So. All right. I'll uh, I'll be right back. If chat has any questions, I can answer them. Yep. I'm gonna fill my water. About Highlander, about this tournament, about.
whatever I'm doing. I think it's probably more reasonable to say about when you have a larger chat. To those who have seen me in prior weeks and have heard about my reputation for playing Time Vault, the reason I'm not playing Time Vault is I haven't uploaded it, I haven't up updated it for guilds yet. Ah. What, do you get, what do you get for guilds? Uh, the one card I'm interested in trying is Mission Briefing. Okay. Uh, because... Being able to flash, have another way to flash back a tutor is really interesting to me. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so, yeah. And yeah. that's why we are quickly uh, just like taking a full break in the round to have everyone figure their stuff out. I mean, mission briefing is really, really good in blue combo decks. Yeah. Like that, that like rely on either tutors or like from my. My Tinker Polymorph deck, like, obviously you want to have a second chance to play your one card combo. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm a... Better I'm turn! A time. I, I, I'm playing Grixis Time Vault, right? Okay. Break off round, yeah. Break off round two, sorry. Break off round three, let's go. Okay. Um, but yeah, Time Vault's my favorite deck um, of all time, and I will always play it. Right. Super sick in the like, gift stacks. So I posted the new um, the new matchups in chat, but um, Eric, hey, are you trying to talk to us, or uh, are, uh, is there a TV to... in your back? My computer was a little stupid. I, I was opening Twitch to find the stream, and it decided to play 10,000 noises. All right. Uh, either way. So do we have... Uh, I think that... Uh... Okay, so Nephil Nephila's back. Let's... Uh... So, let's see what we have for this round. We have Kara versus Tulip. Kara is on her tempo deck. Tulip is on mono red aggro. Which I think is what we're gonna watch. And then we have Nephola <laughs> on four color nonsense and Windy on, uh, on on his usual tempo list. I, I want to watch the... I want to watch mono red aggro, honestly. We have not seen many aggro decks going around and that's gonna be... Yeah. Um, yeah, I... Yeah, I agree with that. Oh, I need to find the game for that, but I'm gonna be honest. In my um, in my match against Nephila, I was there really struggling to find out what his deck was. Uh, there, deck. But uh, yeah, yeah no, Neph Neph's deck is weird. Honestly, uh, they're playing some sort of four color con control deck with stuff like what i kind of gathered from the game is it seemed mm. like four color like lands quote unquote but like and it's not really like it has like a land sub theme and then it, like so the deck plays kind of use entire of Melidius. right he called which the deck, i think like, it, which i think mm. is the entire point of the deck it's a deck that plays kind of entire and i don't know and that's it yeah i think i think he called the deck like Gay King Churns. Like, I think it's supposed to be a Churns deck. Oh, I... Yeah, I guess it might be it. Like, some sort of, like... Inf like, Panoptic Mirror Infinite Turns deck. So, this feels like Mono Red. That, uh, uh, Tulip with the opening uh, with the opening play of Tattermunge Maniac into Gutshot. <laughs> uh, I'm still finding their game... Oh no! Wait, uh, Kara got shot the Tottermund Maniac. I see. Uh, okay. Uh, 
So, okay, uh, Mr. Tulip's hand, Mr. Tulip has a hand of some number of cards that deal 3 damage. He's probably gonna deploy the Stormblood Berserker this turn and move on with his life. Uh, Kara's hand has uh, 3 lands, which are not great. Especially the City of Brass, which is impaleful, and the Wasteland, which doesn't have any target. And then this Brainstorm and this Kraken Drake. Yeah, it's... yeah, I... Okay, I, so Tulip opts to shock Simeon's face and then dash in Zergo Bell Striker. Actually, just cast Zergo Bell Striker. You were saying, sorry? <clears throat> yeah, I was saying Tulip has a really aggressive start. This hand has a lot of burn, a lot of growth effects. To be fair, that's his old deck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's mono red, like that's yeah. It's just red. kind of how the deck over. What does what points does the deck even play? I would assume like Mox Soul Ring. No, I don't think you can play Soul Ring. You have yeah, you, yes. You don't you don't yeah, have so... enough uh, like colorless peeps in your decks. Like Mox. Maybe, like... So he's on Mox Ruby, Mox Emerald, the Mana Crypt, and Strip. Interesting. Why not the Mox Emerald are... Uh, I don't know about those. <laughs> There's a word where you can play Jite. Like that yeah, seems I like think... a card you can put in your deck. Yeah. Red is kind of... Like, a lot of red lists just don't run all of their points because they just don't really need it. No, I mean, I think that's reasonable. <laughs> okay. It's like, why do you need a Soul Ring in your hand when that could be another Lightning Bolt effect? Yeah. Kara um, founds an impulse, which in turn I believe found is Psychothog, uh, which is gonna get cast next turn, which is not bad. It can block the Zergo Ball Striker. Uh, yeah. Tulip's probably I... gonna deploy. So what Kara doesn't know is that the bad news is that the Zergo Ball Striker is gonna turn on the Stormbot Berserker. So now it's two mana three three time, but you know. We're still on the break screen, by the way, on the stream. Oh my god, why do I keep doing How do I keep doing this? Uh, <laughs> I need to become better at that. Actually, let me just change the overlay. There you go. When I'm by myself, I just consistently do this, and it's maddening. Yeah. I feel like right now, um, Tulip kind of has the advantage. I feel like... Yes, I think I would agree with that. Uh, Kara's hand doesn't simply... line up very well with... Uh... Right, like his his deck wants the other... De like, um, Kara's deck very much feels like it wants the other deck to be slower than it and then to take advantage of that, and that's just yeah. not going to happen. In this I mean, aggro versus tempo, the aggro deck is generally favored. Because like, you are, like, the, you are trying to like be tricky while... You are trying to go fast while being tricky and stopping your opponent. They're like, how about I just go fast? Yeah, they like this red deck is just like like he has six burst in hand and a prowess creature in hand. Like this game is not gonna go very long if uh, Car doesn't find an interactive spell. Yeah, no, this deck looks frightening. Um, I'm assuming that uh, now it's Stoneblood Berserker. No, it goes for Abbot of Curl Keep. Oh, did I, you, I actually what, what I, happened I to like Stoneblood that. Berserker? I mean, I feel like this this album sets up for next turn to just, like, whack for a thousand. Yeah, no, that makes sense. What happened to the Stormblood Berserkers? I think, uh... I, I, think I got distracted in the sound and missed it. I think, uh, I think, uh, Kara did have an interactive spell and used it on it. No, I wasn't sure. Uh, Krozis's Charm was the spell. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. 4-4 four, four Crackling Drake. Uh, draws a Tashigur off of it. Tashigur is a pretty good in stabilizing because Mr. Tulip is going to have to probably like 3 for one himself to answer this, this Drake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, no, okay. Like, he can attack no, no, and then he, brute No, no, he can strength. attack and then brute force. Yeah, brute force does, yeah. does the trick. 
if 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 Kara blocks with it, which is with that kind of obliged to. Yeah, I, does 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 Kara block the Zergo or the Abbot? Uh you probably block the Abbot because uh, Zergo is gonna be two damage no matter what. Abbot might be three. Oh yeah, actually he has lethal if uh, a bolt would have went through because he's lightning brute f brutal force. Yeah, I mean, does he just? Uh... He could he could still do the brute force. Yeah, he could still brute force right? Zergo and then point the lightning strike at Kara's face. Uh, uh, sorry, at Sidian's yeah. face. It's uh, Kara's face. And then Kara's at two and doesn't have a board. And he has a barbarian ring. Yeah. Especially yeah, because then the Abbot will trade with the with the Drake if you double, like if you double spell your if you double spell Zergo, Abbot becomes a four three. But yeah, it, I, don't, I don't know if I like that that play, using it on the Abbot. But I think maybe... I like it because he has Barbarian Ring in hand. Oh no, yeah, I think I don't. I think I don't like it because you have Barbarian Ring in hand. Like right, like he, Barbarian he, he Ring means that you, yeah, and you were. You know, you with the fighting the lightning strike, you were uh, pretty close uh, to threshold. Because now this Tassigor is gonna come down now, right? And now uh, Kara is gonna be, I think, one damage short of lethal. Oh, it's even yeah. worse because the thing in the ice is there. Yeah, no, I think it is, didn't yeah. didn't go, didn't do. I mean, and and Kara also has a city of brass on his side of the field, Ooh, so it's like oh, collective brutality. That's yeah. kind of brutal here. And, uh, that, like, thing, like going okay, you didn't kill me. Thing in the ice, collective brutality here, kind of. No, this game, this game is over. Uh, every if collective brutality, <laughs> no, no, I mean. I have I have played a decent amount of burn in modern, and the truth of the matter is that if collective brutality that gets with uh, uh, gets cast uh, with all three modes for profit, you just concede. Like you, you don't even let it resolve. The game is over. Yeah, drain two, kill kill a creature. Yeah, you kill Abbo, drain two, peel uh, a. I, I guess it, she doesn't get to peel anything from the hand, but yeah, uh, and. Yeah. That was kind of a super, super brutal play. Yeah, no, collective and reality that... is just lights out for most aggro decks. It's just like... I mean, Especially for and, decks and... that are diesel-y. Yeah, and, and he has a thing too, so even the creatures on board can't even really pressure very much anymore. Yeah, no, th yeah, for sure. No, I think, I think, I think that uh, Kara might have been... So it's not over yet, really, because like... Tulip can still peel like two balls back to back. And, well, uh, yeah. But this kind of, this, but it's looking it's, good. For, it's looking a lot better for Car than he did last turn. Yeah. Do you think Car goes for all three modes there, or keeps the uh, Tassiger? I think you have to keep the Tassiger because, like, you have to be on the play of. Uh, I will also cast this Tassigur now. Yeah. Right. Like, because then you have two blockers for both of his creatures. Yeah. Looks like that's what he's going for. Yeah, I think that's pretty yeah. reasonable. And yeah, then she, like... she will have to tap the the city of brass to do it, which is a little unfortunate. But whatever you do, what you have to. Yeah, and then and then. Uh... Kara can set up to just continue to use uh, Tasker's activated ability and just, like, take over the game eventually. Yeah. Like, they're both empty-handed, but empty-handed and having a Tasker is... Right. Is, is a lot different than, like, one card in hand that's a land in a burn deck. To be I mean, fair, it's The, the land is also a burn. It's a burn spell, right? Yeah. It's, it's a barbarian name, but... Well, there's there's one of the burn spells that he needs a top deck. Yeah, Incinerate is a really good draw here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know his exact density of burn spells, but it seems pretty likely that he draws a few before Kara gets some more healing. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, 
he's one point of burn away, right? Like I think you. Yeah. I don't. I don't I'm not even sure I would cast this barbarian ring just because, uh, like now, Kara knows that she that she can't tap the city of Bros. Yeah. What I I I feel like the right play there was just like to sit on that hand and then yeah. wait for Kara to tap it once and then just all right, I get you. I think that maybe you play the barbarian ring, but I think it's pretty reasonable to just not. I guess that the upside just... of this is that, like, because Kara's not at, like, a life where, like, she has five lands, so, like, the City of Brass might not be that relevant. It's gonna be, like, like she's probably just, gonna like... be fine with fewer lands, is my point. Yeah, this, like, having, now you're setting up, like, obviously now he, he can't tap the City of Brass, but now if... She, but... He, yeah, now she would have then yeah like you're more happy with your opponent being dead than being unable to tap a city of bros yeah right. see plus what, you know like you if you this. if you just hold on your opponent might thoughts is you i mean it doesn't really matter uh, he got oh, the burst lightning. Top deck burst lightning like a champ. Did not care. <laughs> does not does not matter. Just right. uh, Caleb yeah. just wants to go into game two after sitting and watching me play. Okay, does Kara <laughs> peel a... another counter? Yeah, like she needs to be like another counter spell, but no, it's a call against command. Yeah. I would have tapped the Serial Brass to heal myself. <laughs> In response to casting Burst Lightning again, I'm going to tap my City of Brass. Yeah, and just die. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ooh, 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 Sulfuric Vortex. Jeez. This opening hand is kind of crazy. It's a little slower than the other hands that uh, the Tulip has, but the Sulfuric Vortex is like so often like, it just lights out. Like, like you go prowess creature, turn two, both of your spells, turn three, like, so so your vortex yeah. with a mutavolt to just Yeah, and end. Kara does not have a thought, so his collective brutality can't take, uh, um, can't take sulfuric for it, it's only instance of sorcery, so... Yeah. Okay, this goblin guide that makes me feel a lot better about what's going on. You just slam with the goblin guide. Yeah, that's that's really that's that's really good draw there. Because then next turn, even if the Delver flips, you can be um kinda also hurt him from playing this island, which means that uh, Terminate will not be up next turn. Um So Tulip can go attack with Goblin Guide, right? Next turn, even if the Delver flips and threatens to block the goblin deck, you have the brute strength to make sure the goblin survives, and you can still deploy the soul scarab mage if you do so. I guess that, yeah, terminate is good because then the delver flips, but I don't think you can attack with the delver. Yeah, I mean, this is again kind of the same situation as last game, where like, Kara's hand would be really good against nearly any other opponent, and then, and then but against like, yeah, this yeah, stupid, yeah. like, yeah, it's like, I'm a mono red deck with all of my one drops and all my burn spells. We're in a sulfuric vortex. <laughs> I mean, collective brutality helps a lot. Like, yeah, yeah. To be fair, like collective brutality is going to probably take this gold blast uh, and kill the goblin guide and gain to life, and that's that's a pretty big game. Yeah, I opted not to gain the life. I don't think. He hasn't, uh, she hasn't resolved brutality yet. Oh, yeah, you know, you're right. Um, yeah, no, she, I'm, like, yeah, I'm not, put it on the stack and then yeah, was like, wait a second. Decides not to, yeah. Just show it to Thuli, be like, hey, I have this. Oh, uh, she went to, like, I think she went to, like, go terminate before combat or something, and then... Like, really quickly clicked, and then I was like, wait a second, there's a brutality here now. Yeah, I mean... 
<clears throat> brutality here is going to be really good. I think you just <laughs> go full, you just pitch everything, right? Like, do you keep the Tomb Stalker or the Terminate, I guess, is the question. I guess yeah. you can choose not to drain. Did Kara just pass? That's... Oh, okay. yeah, so so she is holding up Terminate. She's scared of a red 2 drop. But she's not of... holding up Terminate. One of her lands is busy cannon. That's... I think that's what she was saying in chat. But, like, I just don't... I don't know. That seems really weird. It might have been a misclick or something, but she's not requesting a skip. I mean, a rewind or anything. Or maybe she just like thought that she had the mana for terminate. I don't know. So, yeah, Gal Plus takes care of the of the Delver, as as expected. The Goblin gets Philip's Preordain, which uh, I mean, to draw, and now this sulfuric part is gonna start putting work for starting next turn. Yeah. Okay. If Red Fires Red of, if... Finally, Fires of the Collective Brutality. Yeah. Um, I I think you pretty easily take the Soul Scar here. I think I, like... think I agree with that. You get really blown out if he has a God Shot, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess if. Yeah, I guess exactly gut shot would suck here, but. Or Mythogenic Group. Does Mono of Red run that card? Um, I mean, it doesn't. I mean, if you're putting Brute Force in your deck, I think you can put Mythogenic Growth in your deck. I think that that's reasonable. Yeah, if it, like, this is a Mono Red deck, like, kind of a little. Actually, Mono Red in general kind of has like a lot of really good prowess creatures. I mean, Mono Red in general, this is not burn. Right? Like, right. that's the thing. Like, the Mono Red Highlander deck is not really a burn deck, it's uh, a stompy deck. Sorry, it's a sly deck. Where a lot of the time your burn spells are not going upstairs, they're going downstairs uh, to um, make sure that your opponents. Uh, um, the your creatures can get there. Yeah. And but so now Tulip is probably gonna go Muravolt, Sulfuric Forex, attack with Goblin Guide, sure, why not? <laughs> yeah. Finally Goblin Guide draws a land to to draws Simeon a land. And then BAM, how do you feel about the Sulfuric Forex card? <laughs> I don't think Kara feels very good about the Sulfuric Vortex card. It seems yeah. like the kind of thing that you wouldn't feel good about. The Spirit of Destiny is also really good. Like, Tulip, you can get a little blown out because if he goes to um, Pump and uh, it gets wiped from in the response, but, like, what else is he going to do with his mana? Like, I think he's fine sinking all of the rest extra lands. Like, sinking two mana turn into the Spirit of Destiny. I guess that you need to have three. So I'm assuming that what's happening next turn is that uh, we're gonna see attack with uh, Goblin Guide the Mura Vault, uh, and then Figure of Destiny pump Figure of Destiny. That yeah, that seems Un unless like there is a like, great draw from from Car, which is a possibility, but or from Tuli. Like if Tuli pitch, but I guess like he's gonna have a leftover mana anyway. Well, Kara drew this Tomb Stalker, which, uh... Well, she had the Tomb Stalker. She didn't draw it. Yeah, but... she's just choosing to resolve it now. Yeah. To be fair, a 5-5 five, five is pretty good against a bunch of random 2-2s two and one Yeah, ones. no, it's also good against, uh, against, uh... Like, you know, Figure. Sulfuric Vortex only works if you're ahead. Yeah, I think what Car is doing right now is the hope to outrace Tulip with Tombstalker and Tulip's own Vortex. 
Yeah. But if two, uh, if I two don't think it's like... completely unreasonable, but Tulip's, yeah, Tulip's just... draws will have to cooperate. Mm. He, uh, Tulip didn't really want to draw a creature there, wanted to draw a burn spell or something like that. But... No, for sure. Um, so you probably go Mountain, Figure of Destiny, Pump, uh, Regin Runner, yeah. Yeah. The one yeah, cause... by Regin because he can't figure of destiny to the. Um, he can't make an eight eight figure of destiny, but he can make a four four figure of destiny next turn. Yeah, he can make a four four next turn, and the the game's gonna be over. The eight eight. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the game is not gonna get to an eight eight. Better leveler. Oh, never mind. Better leveler is not in fact a good draw for for Kara because she cannot cast it. She can cast Gurmagangle and put another five five on the board. Bedlam Reveler is also uncastable. But both yeah, that's what I said. Bedlam Reveler is uncastable, but Gurmag Angler is not. Oh no, Gurmag Angler also. Oh yeah, because they had Graveyard yeah, yeah. away. What? That seems like a really weird concede. Was she actually dead next turn? It was. He takes like one, she takes like one, two, two. She's still at four. She attacks. And I guess there was no know. way in hell I could win that matchup. You seem pretty far ahead to us. Yeah, no. but. I was I dead mean... to rights there because I just drew, my hand was two spells I couldn't play. My opponent had. Nothing. Uh, four, no, no, my opponent had five damage on board. So I would, if but I you play, could block. Yeah, you're the two. I could block, and then I would take. Uh, I would still take five, and then be dead the next turn, right? Like, um, there was there was no way I could stabilize. Yeah, you can play through your outs. Like you might. What is? There, there was no out there. I have no board wipes. There was no way. I have no board wipes. I have no enchantment answers. I was dead to rights. Um. My, my my one out was drawing Snapcaster on that turn and snapping back uh, brutality, brutality to kill a creature. Yeah, to kill a creature and get two life. There was that that was my one out. Um, other yeah, than I that, think I in was... origin of the fact that you couldn't actually cast the angler because your graveyard was already gone. But yeah, I couldn't cast the angler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I yeah I had five on board. Right, if it was a Tassiger, maybe. I could have stabilized, but that is at that point some I, amount I of stuff there. going on. I moved to the windy versus Nav game, and there's this is a board. Yeah. The, the, yeah, this is this is hopefully. I think this is kind of what uh, Nephila more envisioned his deck doing. Yeah, but I think Nephila is also close to dead. Yeah, uh, like this fever vision has got to be lethal in a couple turns, right? Nev's drawing a I... bunch of extra cards. Um, I love, like, uh, but just to just to like say, I am exhausted, um, and so I think I'm gonna head out for now. After that round one, I don't blame you. <laughs> uh, I mean, like round one was fun; it was just very tight, and then this just was not a fun match. <laughs> like, yeah, mono mono red is arguably like one of the decks that just like. Just, there's so many polarized matchups, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, it's like, it's fine. It's magic. I'm not, like, salty about it. It's just, yeah, Mono Red is basically this version of the deck's worst matchup. And there was no way I could win that game. So it's life. But I'm going to head out and go rest. I'll All talk right. to you guys later. Have a good rest of your day, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Yeah. yeah. And if, uh, the the fevered visions here is a lot like a sulfuric vortex on Nepha. Pretty much, it's one sided with sulfuric vortex. I mean, it doesn't help that he also has the um, razorfin hunter to kind of get through these blockers. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, this is like, yeah, no, no, wind is just dealing for damage a turn. That's just there isn't much uh, much of a way around it. Nef Nef can have it to wait all she wants, but 
Yeah. We have Nephala, Wendy, Tulip, and me left right after this round. Uh, yeah, we have four players. Wind is up one match, so it looks like after this this, uh, this game, the round will be over. And uh, I can probably just tell you what it's going to be, honestly, based on the points. Because I think that the people that dropped uh, um, are the people that dropped. Okay, so... Um, actually, I can't. Yeah, I, I think I'm facing the loser of this match. Although, Nef like, Nephil is up one. No, 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 wait, no, because Tulip, Tulip is now at six. So, yeah, it's going to be probably Windy versus Tulip and you versus uh, Nephil. Yeah. Did, so you already my... face, did you already face Nephil? No, you didn't, right? Yeah, Nephil was, my, Nephil was my game one. Oh, then it's not, that's not going to happen then. So, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. It's kind of weird. Because all the people that dropped went 0-1, right? Yeah. Or 0-2. Yeah, yeah. And I'm technically, I'm like 0-1 and a bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, you're 1-1, one one, but your win is a bye. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. This is a stock. Yeah. This is a stock. The Confluence bouncing the... But the Confluence is not Hunter resolving, Creeper. because Windy somehow managed to convert the Spell Pierce into steal a card on turn 85. Mm. Which is also nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nef came to life somehow? Um, Corsair? Right. Corsair is what's making the is probably why he's been through his favorite visions for so long. Yeah. Because it's like he loses two and gains one every turn, presumably. Because he's also drawing extra cards to hit the lands. Okay. Windy also finds a Jalactor, which is also a, a way to f like keep. Does Does Windy have it next turn? I mean, it depends on what car. Kara's gonna gain another life with this Hallowed Fountain. Windy had DL1 with her with the Razor Fin Hunter. Um, Windy's draw was Lightning Strike, which makes it pretty likely that he has it next turn. <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah. He definitely does, right? Because so, Neff is gonna gain a life, go to sex. Uh, Windy is going to ping her down to five with the Razor Fin Hunter, and then, uh, um, and then uh, untap, uh, ping with the Jalactor, Lightning Strike, ping with Jalactor, Razor Fin Hunter. That's actually one more damage. So like he can actually even like let Neff. Uh, uh, yeah, he has Nef, if Neff if Neff bolts the Jalactor, the then Electrode. they're not. Yeah, because. Yeah, he's at five three. Oh, I guess he's playing. He's also, playing Nef might be also. Nef might be able to uh, go under the the fever visions. Yeah, if, if he has the card, like they're gonna have only three in hand. If he if he bolts the electrode, he's also under the fever visions, so he might be a bit safer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's probably the play, right? You, re I don't know what she's regrowing. Really what they're regrowing, whatever they regrow, they regrow, they regrow a time warp, which they, is they also, solid. Yeah, they also still have um, the Gate Kings out, which is gaining them even more life off their Corsair. I mean, only if they draw land. Yeah, I, I presume... This, uh, this only puts it, land into play from your hand. It doesn't, doesn't put them in from the battlefield. So like, yeah. I mean, Windy's drawing three cards a turn here, so I don't actually think there's anything that's gonna help this. You're not wrong. <laughs> I 
At the beginning of your end step, draw a card each player. May. So yeah, Wendy at the end step also gets. Um, so Wendy gets to draw, to draw one card from Favorite Division at his end step and one card from the Gay Kings uh, at Neff's end step. And one on the draw phase. And so that's yeah, kind of, of like, course, and his normal card that we all get to draw. Yeah. Neff's definitely putting up a fight. <laughs> yeah, Neff isn't completely out. Do you know what the record is right now? Uh, wind is up 1-0. Okay. At least I mean, I looks... think. I'm gonna double check, but I believe that that's the case. Yeah, wind is up 1-0. Yeah. I mean, wind looks Maybe... far ahead to me, but I mean, who knows? Like, he has Grim Lava Man. So... Oh, that's I'm also sure. the Glava Man? Oh, then I guess yeah. you have to kill Lava Man, right? You can't let Windy end up with Lava Man. Yeah, Lava Man and Electro both do two next turn, presuming that Windy doesn't draw any other burn. Yeah, no, okay. N Neff is, like, super dead. There's, there's no way that Neff doesn't die here. Yeah. And if he gets, like... Like, he's already kind of dead on board. And if the favorite vision hits him like just once, there's almost nothing you can do. Yeah, I mean, the favorite vision is gonna hit this turn. No, it, it totally is because uh, Kanaos is gonna draw a card. So she uh, Nef needs to draw a land. They need they need to draw a land right now so that they can put it into play with Kanaos, and they didn't. So they're gonna take two from their favorite visions. And actually, I mean, the land wouldn't even have. Yeah, favorite visions resolved first, so I don't think he's gonna take the two. They, but yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, they. Yeah. Um. Uh. No, yeah, you're right. They, they didn't take the two. But they're still dead. <laughs> like. Yeah. Windy I mean, has is a nice... five points of burn. Like Windy has four points of burn in play without uh, his hand. Bolting phase here is just over. Yeah, I, I think I think it Nephola is just seeing the writing on the world and uh, he's like that that like whatever, like I'm just gonna bolt you. Oh, they have another turn. There was a time warp. <laughs> they drew a time walk, that's kinda of funny. <laughs> I mean if they time walk enough times, maybe this uh Corsair will get them high enough that they don't die next turn. I mean the hand no, okay, Gearhulk is only instant, so Yeah, Gearhulk is not strictly better. Yeah, then Snapcaster in this circumstance. I'm trying to figure out Circus. if there is a way for Gear Hulk to become a... But the Arrow can flash back Bolt. Like, can, if, Windy, can... if Windy doesn't block both of these, of these creatures, uh, there's he's also dead. Gear Hulk on There's also Gear Hulk on swords, um, hitting your own Gear Hulk to gain life, or Mystic Confluence to bounce Gear Hulk and do more stuff. But there's also just Windy in the game. Nef, Nef can just play the oh. Gearhulk for both. Okay, Windy saw the line and decided to block both of most of Nef's creatures, but... I think that's what um, the bolting Windy's face is playing into. Yeah, no, is I mean... Is Gearhulk bolt. Yeah, the, it it definitely see. makes a lot more sense knowing that uh, your turn, the next turn is also going to be your turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like you gear hulk bolt face take a next turn again. Yeah, and I think yeah, I think I think Neff has won. Yeah, I completely had forgotten about the time warp because it took so much time <laughs> to actually resolve the turn. Um I think yeah. given the time warp, but yeah, no, Neff was actually in in pretty good lead. That's a that's a that's a pretty close game too, but it turns out sometimes this turns deck can do its job. It's so it's the next deck is just so wacky. It's it's, it's like, definitely an odd one. It's like it, a lot of it one like a lot of it looks like a turns deck, and then it's also like has like cards like settle the wreckage and ramp creatures, and like it's also a whole lot of colors for some reason. And there's like. Depth stage, right? Yeah, uh, I lost at the depth stage combo 
game one. Well, he he yeah, he also has prime time in there. Yeah. Like prime for Thespian and uh, Dark Depths. I'll have to ask Neff about this as afterwards. Like I'm I'm just not a hundred percent sure like what some of the like I don't know, it's just like a five color turns deck, sort of. It's four. Uh, the, the, there is no black. He has um scrublands. Does he he might play it just for bring to light though? Neff is a huge bring to light fan. <laughs> I mean it's, it's a good card. I mean, playing exactly Scrublands to get a five uh, to get a time warp bring to light makes sense. I only know he is because he like fetched it in his, in I think his last game against me. I was just like, wait, this deck is also this deck is five colors now. And to be fair, Neff also has access to some to like I think City of Brows and that sort of thing. Yeah, he has that whole cycle too. Yeah. yeah. He probably doesn't actually need to play Scrublands. That whole cycle, <laughs> aka two cards. And the Scrubland gives you ten additional sources, right? Or I guess seven additional sources because of the because of the yeah, 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 yeah. It makes it more reliable and white for both the two colors that he's least in, so it kinda makes yeah. sense to have a land for both. That is probably game. Yeah, I, I think this game has been over. The next turn is also gonna be Neff's turn. Like, Neff's just playing with their, with their food at this point. Yeah, so <laughs> after, this, uh, after this round, sadly, like... Honestly, like... The way that we were intending to do stuff was for... Uh, uh, Elo to be the one that ran the tournament, because there was this chance they would have to leave early. But uh, then he was told yesterday that he needed to go into work and uh um which sucked for him yeah and also means that i had to run this thing but sadly today i'll have to take off a little bit early than usual and sometimes you're down by like 5 30 but this is not this is not one of those days so i think that what we're gonna have to do is uh, uh i'm gonna pair you for round three and uh you are uh, very welcome to play. I am. Uh, I'm gonna shut the stream down, and we're gonna only have the first, uh, the first two rounds on stream for today. And then uh, let me know. How, yeah, tell me, tell me how the next two rounds go, and I'll, they'll count for the for the tournaments. I'll put them in, and we'll um, we'll we'll keep it. Yeah, up. this is this is a really weird weekend for a lot of. Yeah, honestly. I'll be honest, I am strongly considering... Uh, I think I'm gonna roll back the, the sign-up deadline back to like 12 hours. Before the event instead of 2. Because I, do, I want to go to bed on Saturday knowing if there is gonna be a tournament on Sunday. This is just like... I, I need to be able to figure out what my Sunday is gonna be before I... Um, yeah. Be be before I go to bed on Saturday. I, I don't want to wake up. Because like, that also changes the time I wake up, right? Like, Sunday is a day that if, like, if I want to sleep in a little, I want to have that option. And uh, uh, they, they usually have to take care of some stuff, like things such as eating lunch and doing various errands if I'm going to be cooped up in my house for the, for the whole afternoon. So, like... Like I think I want. I think I. I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna roll that back. I think it's. Just, I mean, I understand it's better for the player, but it doesn't work for me. Like, let me put it that way. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah. How how is Windy still in this game? I thought uh, he, had. I mean, he's not. He's just not conceding. Oh, Windy says that. Oh, if Neff doesn't kill Windy on this turn, he can top deck pop. Pop would be mega lethal. I think that's what he's checking for a ponder. He's like, I don't know if that. I, d I don't have access to Windy's hand. Uh, Windy's hand is Steam Vent Lightning Strike. But he's, he's about to draw like three cards, right? So. So, Islander is the draw. 
and concedes. Okay. Game three. <laughs> Neff, uh, he has uh, four lands. Okay, goes to the second six, which is land, land, flame slash true name nemesis, bloom tender, teferi. Um, which I don't think lines up with well with most of what Windy's hands are doing. Windy is on uh, uh, Island, Strip Mine, Charter Course, uh, Ancestral Recall. Um, <laughs> that is that is Windy's special is getting Ancestral Recall every time he needs yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that that is that is that is what that is what Windy said was. Uh, he he's practiced it for a few tournaments, so yeah. um, it's not uh, really surprising. Here. Although he didn't throw a red source, which is I think is the thing he really wanted of this recall. Now he decides to peach. Um... Oh, he end of turn. Dude. Okay, that makes sense. Did this this draw... back to basics is just so good versus an F in like every game. Yeah, I mean, I think back to basics, uh, you just bank on it, that it's going to deal, like, 12 damage or whatever. If I'm Windy, I might want to just play Charte Horse there, just in case, instead of Strip Mining, but Strip Mining is also, like, powerful, so, like, you, it's understandable, but... Neff's end, like, he, he, Neff's is going to, he's getting, uh, you know, set back. But Windy, Windy needs, Windy needs a mountain. Yeah, Windy does not have a, a red for all of his really good burn spells. Yeah, for, for the four red spells in his hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's going to have no problem casting this counter spell. But... Uh, let me let me update uh, the thing actually. I do not think Wendy drew a mountain in any of his draws. Oh no, that's a Sulfur Falls. Yeah, it's good enough. He drew a red source. <laughs> and Neff is already lined up to take six from Price, which is, like, even that is insane, but... I think Wendy is basically just a burn deck right now in this matchup. Yeah, I mean... Okay, I have uh, now updated the... Uh, now updated the, the side... Uh stream yeah really. another thing i don't know how much easier it makes it but like if you have the list 12 hours before you can also get like clearer names and stuff like that for each deck like for neff i don't know when he submitted but like, it probably would have been helpful to like look at the list like oh this is a weird list like, what is this list? So we kind of have an idea of... Yeah, I, I will be perfectly frank with you. I don't know that I have the time to do that because my Saturdays tend to also be pretty busy. But I'll, uh, if, if there's the time to do that... Also, like, if there's two people running the tournament, then that becomes suddenly a lot easier to do that sort of thing, right? But... Right, uh, yeah. This week, it, this week we had to run, like, a little bit more of an artisanal... Uh, like, we had to run, like, a little bit more... Uh, rough shot way of doing things just because there's only there's only me 
Uh, windy remains the cohesive portal. Usually remanding a 4-drop is great. Windy's hand <laughs> has this lava coil and this... Uh, and this flame slash, which are no. not great. Yeah. I mean, he is snapcast... Like, like you snapcast at price of progress is, isn't that enough. I guess he doesn't have enough mana for right. it yet. Like, so, to fairy... You might just no, you can't, right? Electrolyze face in response. Is he gonna force of will? Uh... Okay, for probably force of will. Uh, exile and spell pierce, I would guess. Hmm. This this play feels kind of bad if he draws a uh, land. I mean, ideally, you would have liked to spell Pierce the Teferi, but, you know. Well, that too, yeah. Steamance Steam is, Steam is good. Yeah. And I mean, Neff is at 4 life. Let's not forget that. Yeah, this, this Steam Vents draw means that... Actually, uh, it's, no, Neff is dead. Neff's dead. Well, yeah, he's dead now, but um, he could have been dead... He could have been that last turn if Wendy would have priced and yeah, then his turn that end, price. Yeah, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Like Wendy is gonna yeah. like this can I just resolve whatever. Wendy fires off the pop end of turn and then goes snapcast their pop and Neff is like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> but we were playing pop, Nash. Snap, pop <laughs> Six mana take four for all of your land. Yeah. Like, really, really good. It's, it's exact it's it's take twenty damage. It's six mana take twenty. Yeah, that that oh, tends to win games. Also have a two one. <laughs> <laughs> Six minute two one, I'll take eight, you'll take twenty, <laughs> so fair. Oh no, the set to snapcaster for remand. Interesting. I mean there's also snapcaster. I mean that's also lethal. Like, I think it, there's it, also I don't know. No, but it's also lethal, right? Because then he can fight off the pop. No, he can't because it's remand. But so he can attack with Snapcaster and then plan to go Lightning Strike pop on this turn. Yeah, you just attack a Snap, pop, Lightning Strike. Yeah. Yeah, that also works. Whatever. It, Neff it was like dead, like dead in like 28 points. It didn't matter exactly yeah. the, spe the specifics of what... Uh... Yeah, Windy missed a few lethals, but it didn't actually end up mattering. I mean, it, he didn't really. Like, Neff was going to be dead on this turn. It just mattered. Like... It doesn't matter. Like, it didn't change the clock, right? Like, Neff was going to be dead on this turn. It just changed the how right. that happened. It changed, like, and what you're playing around. Right. Like, we also know that Neff doesn't have very many counters, but a lot of the people in this tournament don't really know what Neff's deck is, and we barely do, too. Yeah. Not so, like, fair. he could potentially be playing around, like, oh, if they counter the second price or the first price, then, like, this doesn't really do much. Okay, uh, so, as I anticipated, I'm going to wait for the other people to, to join in, but as I anticipated, uh, so, as I was saying uh, to the people in chat and to Eric earlier, sadly, um, I need to go. <laughs> uh, I, this as tournament, I the, the original plan was to have Ilo and run it, uh, on his hand because it, there was this possibility that he would have to leave early but then he got called into work yesterday uh, like yesterday he was told that he wouldn't do need to work today so uh, we end up in this position where I was forced to run it and then now I have to go and we'll have to live with it what he's gonna do is I'm gonna play round 3 and you guys uh, uh, if you guys want to play the round you're welcome to and uh, you so this was windy to 1 right yeah so I'm gonna play round 3 and uh, you are welcome to play it, and then you can tell me the results, and I'll plug them in, and uh, you, and then we'll we'll put them we'll put them onto the event. Is that okay with everybody? Yep. That's fine. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry that we'll have to end this early, but uh, this is how it shaked up this week. Okay. Let me just post them in tournament discussion. And uh, make sure you at me when uh, when you post the results, otherwise I'm 100%.
Oh, I ripped my ball, so it has to leave. I don't know why I'm so connected to the voice. Oh, I'm connected on my computer. That's super strange. Okay. Boy. Okay, Eddie Pop said he also has to has to go sadly. Um, so the finals is Tulip versus Windy. Yeah. And uh, Neff has the buy. And uh, yeah, just uh, just let me know just let me know how that goes. And uh, yeah, good luck to been, both of you. That would have been really funny. Yeah. Wait, on the match. Okay. Sorry, okay. can't hear you. Won the match. Uh, Windy won the match. No, I, I know that. That was in that match. What? What, what are you asking? Oh, uh, the Tulip. Tulip won against Kara. Yeah. Okay. We didn't get. We didn't get a million threes. Yeah, no, so if uh, Eripmav had not dropped, which he said that he has to go, so I dropped him, yeah. uh, we, you would have, it would have been uh, Windy versus Eripmav and Tulip versus Nefola, because uh, um, Eripmav and Nefola have already played. No, but yeah. he had to go, so I have to drop him from the event. All right. So, uh, you guys uh, get to playing. I'll... Uh, I'll um, have good luck with to both of you with your matches, to all the people watching us um, and uh, listening to us. Thank you for watching. It means, it means the word to us that we have people that are uh, taking a look at what we're doing. We'll pu I'll put uh, the VOD up uh, on the YouTube channel later on. If you want to sign up for this event, by all means, do so. You do it by showing up on the Canadian Highlander Discord. If you're watching the VOD, there is uh, there will be a link in the description. If you're watching the if you're watching live, I am popping an invite in chat right now. There you go. And uh, you on Thursday usually there's a, an announcement that goes up. And uh, we, it's from Mio Velo that they're like this, this that describes what's going on with the, with the Sunday, and then on Sunday at two thirty passive at two thirty Eastern Eastern whatever that is in other time zones, you show up and uh, play Magic and you get to play Hanander Hanander, which is great. You get to play the next match, which is less than great, but you know, you win some, you lose some. Thanks everybody for watching, and I will talk to you next week.